Hello everybody. It's been a little while since I did a regular video and I am in the same position as so many other people all around the globe. This pandemic has certainly made a huge difference in all of our lives in so many ways and everybody's got stories to tell. There are certain things that I have tried to do to maintain some sense of normalcy in my life and it's hard because there are days that are very frightening because for me, every single thing that could possibly contribute to my income and to my ability to sustain myself in the coming months is hugely affected by this. So it's a scary time. I try to not think about the scary stuff because I have no control over it. So what I do every morning when I get up is I try to determine the things that I'm capable of doing on that particular day. I have a few little bits that I'm gonna be putting in here in this video to show you some of the little things that I have done in the past few days. And um, you'll take a look at those with me. So if you're interested in hearing about how I'm functioning during this COVID issue that, as I say, is affecting everybody, I heard that yesterday, as I'm sure you all have, that Prince Charles has it. And it's, I mean, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's in so many countries. It's in so many states, all the states. There are some counties in the states, even some counties of New York that don't have a single case. And I think that's wonderful, but it is what it is. We have to live through this. And I think there are lessons in it. I put out a little um, blurb about that on Instagram. I think it was yesterday about the difference that it makes in terms of the lessons that we tend to learn. For me, I know the, the biggest and greatest lessons I've learned in my life have always come with a lot of angst. It's always the difficult things that we have to live through that teach us the most. There have been a couple of really funny things that have happened when I talk to my friends and the things that other people have to deal with. And I know one of the huge, huge factors and who would have thought for us all to deal with now is the lack of toilet paper or the inability to acquire toilet paper at any kind of a normal price because people, a lot of people, we thought were hoarding it in the beginning as I figured they would, were buying it to resell at crazy high prices. And as I have said before, there is little that makes me angrier or gets me more upset is people who choose to benefit financially or otherwise from other people's pain. I think it's despicable and I think they should be ashamed of themselves but that is what it is. So I got a call from my friend today telling me that he was in a store and he came across some toilet paper and did I want any? The answer was absolutely yes. So I will be getting the allotted two packages. I believe it's four rolls each, two packages of toilet paper. So the day that I have to start looking for leaves on the ground to try to wipe my butt or anything more creative than that. I don't know, but so I'll be okay for a little while. I hope you all are as well. Um, I'm not going to go into what other people have said that they are willing to do, starting to do, thinking of doing. But I think we've had some really, really funny and very creative ideas from the people that we know. I'd love to know how you're doing. I would love to know how this is affecting you on a daily basis. I know for me, one of the biggest issues is that I live alone. And because I am alone, oh well, um, I feel it more because I don't have other people here to to talk to all the time, to break up. You know, if I'm, if I'm going through a tense time or if I'm feeling nervous, I don't have anybody to take my mind off it. I do. I'm lucky enough to have friends who 
call me and I have talked to people. It's not the same thing though as having somebody living with you, somebody who is there, somebody you can turn to and just have a conversation to get rid of some of that fear. Uh, as the, the motivational thing that I put out this morning said, if we have more faith than fear, we will get through this better. And that's absolutely true. And I just pray for all of you that you are not affected by the devastation of this disease. And I know many people have been. And God bless everyone affected by it, either directly or peripherally, because I know it's it's a hard time. We've never lived through anything like this in our lifetimes. Yes, we've dealt with things, the older of us, of wars and the things that come along with that, but we haven't dealt with anything like this. It's kind of Mother Nature saying, it's time for you all to learn a lesson. You have to stop doing what you're doing. Just stop, take a breath and have some thought about the future of yourselves and the future of the planet that you occupy. So that in itself is, is a thought. I have been lucky enough to have had a few sales here and there on my Poshmark closet, and I'm grateful for every one of them. So I have gone to the post office to mail my packages. I really have not gone out a whole lot. Otherwise, I am blessed again to have um, a friend who's kindly picked up food for me several times. A matter, as a matter of fact, is coming over again later today to bring me some more things. And it's, it's a great help. But when I went out, I, I was astounded, and I'm going to put in a little video of it. When I went to the post office yesterday to mail my package, there is a municipal lot there. And it is always full, absolutely full. I took a look at it yesterday. I think there were three cars in there. Huge lot. It's the way our world is changing. Our post office, fortunately, has the... Um, the equipment to allow people who are disabled to enter without trying to pull the door open and all of that. So I hit the button with my elbow. I wore my gloves, my disposable gloves. And when I brought the package in, everybody was maintaining that distance well more than six feet, probably eight to 10 feet each at least. And um, when I, when she took my package, and when the receipt printed out, I took it from the machine. She didn't touch it. I did. I got back to my car, took my gloves off, used my hand sanitizer that thankfully I had from before. I don't have a lot left. It was a small bottle to begin with. I'm going to touch my face again. That's the hardest part. That really is. I have such an itch. What are you supposed to do? Oh, my God. I can't. I... <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard. In any case, um, I then, as I say, I, I sanita sanitized my hands and I went home and I came in the house and I washed my hands. And I have to tell you, I have been singing happy birthday to David. I've been singing happy birthday to Zach and to Dylan and to everybody I know because they say if you sing happy birthday to you twice all the way through that's 20 seconds and i'm getting much better at recognizing the length of time i need to really wash my hands i don't know about you my hands are absolutely like sandpaper i feel like if the skin doesn't come off it's going to be miraculous i normally wash my hands quite a bit I really, I don't want to say I'm OCD about it, but I, I wash my hands a lot. But now I'm washing my hands a lot, as I'm sure we all are. So that's it. I am lucky that I have not had to go into the supermarkets lately. I did go in the beginning, but I have not gone in. It's got to be, oh my God, it's got to be over a week at this point. 
Tell me if the time is going slowly for you. Tell me what you're doing to make the time work for you. I'm trying to get done some of the things in my house that have to get done anyway. I, one day I did three loads of wash. I did my towels and, and sheets and I did my uh, darks and my lights and I folded everything and put it away and I'm trying to organize better the stuff that I have from my store so that I have easy access to it when somebody buys it. And I am trying to not get into the kind of paralysis that we can get into when we're scared. And I think many, many people are very frightened because they don't know what the future holds. I mean, this, when they talk about it, and I must say, I must say, living in New York, I love Governor Cuomo. I wonder how many of you would agree with me. I think the man is very straightforward. He tells us like it is. He does not sugarcoat anything. He is not an alarmist, but he will let you know what the dangers are. And he is reasonable. He's honest. I'm very impressed. I really am very impressed. I, you know, I just wish that uh, there were more people like him. So it is what it is. I hope you all get through this relatively unscathed. I want to hear your stories. Tell me what's been happening for you in the comments, if you will. And I'm going to be coming back as often as I can do for you because I want to keep you informed about what I'm doing, how I'm dealing with it, and trying to survive it. Survive it physically, survive it emotionally, and just get through it and get to the other side. We all have to do that all over the world. It's not just us. This is global. Take care, everybody. You know that I love you. And I hope this finds you well. And I'm going to try to do a live, very possibly tonight, tonight being Thursday. And I will post it on um, Instagram. And I will post it on the uh, Night Owls page. So take care. And I'll see you very soon.